Welcome to how SDVOE communicates on a network. This course will guide you through the intricate maze of networking ports and protocols which are used by SDVOE technology to give you a more confidence when discussing SDVOE with those professionals who need to fully understand how the networks need to adapt in order to be able to accommodate SDVOE. The course supports the explaining SDVOE to your IT team because it provides further explanations to help give you more confidence when discussing SDVOE network transport to IT professionals, for example. It's also a really useful stepping stone into the more advanced topics, which we'll be introducing to the SDVOE Academy very soon. Imagine a bustling city where data packets are like vehicles, protocols are the rules of the road, and ports are designated parking spaces where these vehicles must arrive. In our networking city, the correct ports ensure data packets are parked or delivered to the correct service. Much like a postal code ensures a letter reaches the correct mailbox. Without these specific addresses, our data would be lost in the digital metropolis. And as we explore this landscape, remember that each port number is crucial for routing data efficiently and accurately across a network. TCP. You know what that stands for? Of course you do. Transmission Control Protocol. We've all heard of it. It's a cornerstone of network communication. It's a bit like having a dedicated courier, the TCP courier, ensuring that all the data packets arrive intact and in the right order. Now the port numbers here that are used for the RESTful interface are 80 and 443. These are like the courier's destinations, the postcodes if you like. They ensure that the control software can reliably converse with the API server without any interference. A bit like a private meeting room in a crowded office. And the use of these port numbers is not arbitrary, but they are well-established identifiers that network services listen to, creating a streamlined and organized communication system. Put it this way, without these ports, our data would be misdirected like a letter without a clear address. Now, unlike TCP's careful courier, UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, is a bit like a town crier. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, yeah. yay! One of those. Broadcasting messages quickly without confirming receipt. Port 6969, which supports multicast, unicast, and broadcast, is a hub of activity where control signals are dispersed like announcements in a public square. What well, was coming back then? Reaching many endpoints at once, UDP. This efficiency is vital for real-time device discovery and status updates. The specific port number allows the network to filter and direct these announcements appropriately, ensuring that only the intended recipients, be that one or a group or all of them, receive the message. It's a selective calling system, and it's crucial for maintaining order, order in our network's communication channels. In the Codec Triangle series, we introduce you to the Pixel Video Pipeline, or PVP codec, a star performer in the SDVOE lineup. PVP codec is like a specialized cargo plane carrying HDMI audio, video, and digital audio data payloads across the network without a direct path. And it does this using multicast. This means that the data is available to any device tuned in to the multicast address, similar to a broadcast, but on a specific radio frequency. This method is incredibly efficient for distributing high bandwidth content like video and audio to multiple devices simultaneously. Why is there no specific port listed though? 
Well, that's because this is what we call a connectionless protocol, referred to as Protocol 75. And it does not use port numbers, the equivalent of having a private airstrip, if you like, for our cargo plane. Each multicast address within the multicast range, 224.1.1.1 up to 224.1.3.225, only carries a single AV data flow. And these are acting as our radio frequencies, allowing us to dial in to the right data stream. And you can learn more on this on the How To Master Multicasting course here on the SDVOE Academy. The exchange of RS-232 and infrared data utilizes UDP. What does that stand for? Yes, user datagram protocol, and it's crucial for remote control operations. Here, ports 10,001 to 10,004, they act like individual doors in a vast control center, each leading to different rooms of command and control. Good way to remember it. Devices listen for signals on these ports allowing for precise and targeted communication. The use of a range of port numbers accommodates multiple data streams, similar to having several lines open in a call center, enabling simultaneous, diverse communications. These ports ensure that instructions for audio-visual equipment are not only sent, but also received by the correct device maintaining the harmony and responsiveness of the entire system. Icron's USB Extreme chipsets are integrated into many SDVOE products. They utilize ports 6137 and 6971. And they use these for device discovery and control using UDP. Very good. Now imagine a security access system where specific badges only grant access to certain areas. Similarly, these port numbers are acting as electronic badges, granting data packets entry to interact with devices using Icron technology. The specific port numbers are vital because they distinguish between different types of traffic, ensuring that discovery and control packets reach their intended destination without confusion. And that, allows seamless peripheral device integration. What have we got here? Ah, USB, good old USB. USB DAS HID or human interface device. This is a protocol which governs how peripherals such as keyboards and mice communicate over the network, again, using UDP. Now, port 6973 is dedicated for this purpose, I and mean, it operates like a private channel for confidential conversations. Unicast is ensuring that these communications is direct and secure, a bit like a private chat room. And again, the port number here is essential because it's the difference between a private line and a public forum. And that ensures that sensitive peripheral data isn't being broadcast across the whole network for anything to intercept. Hmm. Hello? 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 Hello, packets. These are extremely important UDP multicast discovery packets. And they're sent from port 6969. These packets are like digital flares signaling an endpoint's presence to the entire network. The multicast address 224.0.1.188 is a gathering point where devices tune in to discover each other. And this specific port and address combination is like a designated meeting room in our city of data, vital for coordination and connectivity among devices. Hello, hello. Hello. Ah, yes, SSDP. Sometimes things are simple to say, but not 
This is simple service discovery protocol. Say that five times now without getting it confused. Simple service discovery protocol. It's not easy, is it? But it is simple. It's only supported by the SDVOE control server, not all the endpoints. It communicates on port 1900 and it's a key player in service discovery within an SDVOE network. Think of SSDP as the search engine allowing application layer interfaces and controllers like the SDVOE control server, for example, to discover control server services which are available on the network. This port is a beacon. It's emitting a signal that these services and only these services respond to, allowing for the discovery of available network resources. It's like having a directory in a large building guiding you to the right office amongst hundreds of others. Throughout this course, we've been referencing port numbers a lot. Layer four, transport. These port numbers play a critical role in how SDVOE communicates on a network. They're the backbone of organized data transport, dictating the flow of traffic and ensuring that every packet finds its way to the right service. Without these numerical identifiers, our network would descend into complete chaos with data packets colliding and services unable to communicate effectively. These port numbers are the unsung heroes of network efficiency, allowing SDVOE to deliver high quality AV experiences seamlessly. As we close this course, remember that these ports are more than just numbers. They're the architects of network order and functionality.